ていいじゃないですか。<笑>
on this planet. Uh, anyway, so I actually uh, was going to do this rant a couple of weeks ago when I watched uh, a surprisingly refreshing soft white underbelly uh, where Mark interviewed a divorce attorney named James Sexton. It was an hour-long interview where James Sexton, who I think is, he looks like a little younger than me. I think he's been a divorce attorney for over 20 years in, uh, I believe, Manhattan. But anyway, you really need to go on Soft White and Underbelly and listen to that uh, <clears throat> interview with divorce attorney James Sexton uh, giving his thoughts on love and marriage. Uh, an excellent interview, worth every minute, especially if you think you're in love with somebody but you're not yet married. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you're not yet married, uh, that man could save you a lot of heartache and a lot of money. But anyway, of all the things he was talking about, <clears throat> one thing that, that he mentioned, uh, you know, when he's working with his clients, uh, just for his curiosity as much as anything, he always asks his clients, when did you first realize the marriage was broken? I'm talking a Humpty Dumpty level of broken, never to be put back together again. Uh, what was the moment that you knew uh, that, that this marriage is over? Uh, it might limp along uh, with us both kidding ourselves, uh, but at least when one of you knows, uh, there is no saving this marriage next stop divorce court. And, of course, you guys are all aware of the infamous ham sandwich incident uh, that happened on October 11th, 1990 in Sweet Home, Oregon. But uh, this is not about that. I had already known uh, before the infamous ham sandwich incident that the marriage w was unsalvageable. And I was just, you know, still grasping, you know, by my fingernails, going over the divorce cliff, thinking, is there any way to pull this marriage out of, out of the goddamn pit that it had been in? Pretty much after about the first two years uh, that, no, I don't know when Caroline knew it was over. I, I never had this conversation with her. So anyway, the backstory of this is uh, it was the, the late 80s and we were working in California and San, we were living in Santa Cruz, California in this beautiful home up in the Santa Cruz Mountains in the Redwoods. I was a clueless moron. Uh, real estate agent working for Century 21 Showcase in Santa Cruz, California, and, and Caroline had a, she worked what we call over the hill. She made that drive, that god-awful drive over the mountain uh, to the city, you know, to San Jose, where she had some big muckety-muckety job, <clears throat> muckety-muckety job which she loved very much at the Crippled Children's Society. It's where uh, she had a master's degree in special education. <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, we were living the lives of Riley. Beautiful home, 
good jobs, great friends, uh, money pouring in, everything, uh, you know, looking at us, anybody would have thought that we had it, that we were uh, you know, riding the wave, but of course, uh, as is behind the veil of, I, I don't know what percentages of marriages, we had an awful marriage, an awful marriage that I honestly don't know how well hidden we kept from our friends. Uh, I think they probably had a few clues how bad the marriage was. And so uh, <clears throat> we were already thinking um, about, and this was more me doing the thinking, leaving these, uh, this life of Riley, little yuppie Reagan years life we had carved out for ourselves in, uh, in California to go save our marriage. Uh, I, I think that I was probably <clears throat> about 85% responsible for our decision to uh, leave Santa Cruz and this beautiful life we uh, lived together to head to Oregon. We were generally aiming for Eugene, Oregon. We were trading one little limp dick lefty university town for just another limp dick lefty university town, Eugene, Oregon. So uh, I took Caroline up there and warmed her up to the idea and she she fell in love with Eugene, figured, uh, well, okay, we can make this work and maybe a fresh start for both of us will uh, reboot our marriage. I would have had no trouble. I would have just walked right in to Century 21, you know, in Eugene, and she would have had no problem getting a good job, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the final nail in that coffin was that earthquake uh, on October 17th, 1989 at 5.04 p.m., uh, the Loma Prieta earthquake, which pretty much ended my real estate uh, career in 17 seconds. So that was our message from the universe. Even Caroline heard that one, uh, that it was time to get the hell uh, out of the Santa Cruz mountains. So <clears throat> we ended up selling our house in Santa Cruz making a big pile of money and uh, heading up to, to Oregon. We were going up there a lot. So we found this little house about, uh, it was about 30 minutes outside of Eugene, and which was kind of as far out as she wanted to be. It was in a little town, can't remember the name of the little town, some it was a cute little house on about five acres of land that we were going to buy for cash. Uh, put a big pile of money in, in our pocket. So we were going to just own the place free and clear, have no mortgage, have a big pile of cash. There was going to be no financial career pressure. We were going to get up there and work on our marriage. Uh, you know, start a little garden and all of that Spanish pipe dream that uh, John Prine talked about. Not, of course, we were not going to have a lot of children. Uh, so anyway, that was the plan. And so we sold our house after we had found, and, and, and in the middle of all this, we got the well report back. The seller had told us that the well was producing 10 gallons a minute. Well, it ended up the well uh, was producing less than one gallon a minute. 
and uh, we got in a big argument with the damn seller, and he basically told us to go fuck off. Uh, you know, we wanted, I don't know what we were suggesting, that he split the price of a new well, and, and he said, go fuck yourselves, you little spoiled-ass yuppies, or whatever. So here we are, we're now homeless uh, in in Oregon, so we're just renting a, a, a place in Eugene, you know, while we're out shopping for a new house, uh, and just enjoying uh, some time off and whatnot, and well, it ended up, and I can't exactly remember why, we did not end up within a half hour of Eugene, we ended up about 90 minutes away from Eugene in some right-wing hellhole called Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, it was this logging town, this lumber town full of logging trucks and uh, trump tards. And d d d my God, I remember <coughs> Audubon Magazine, I think the, the year after our trip to uh, Sweet Home, Oregon, Audubon Magazine went looking for the most environmentally incorrect town in the United States of America, and uh, they came up with Sweet Home, Oregon as the biggest shithole uh, in the United States. This is where we chose to save our marriage. So we bought this, uh, fortunately we didn't close on it. That's a whole another story I've told before. Uh, I'll have to retell that one about buying that house or not buying that house. Uh, so we move up there <clears throat> and we're renting that house. It was supposed to close on October 13th, 1990. Remember the date of the ham sandwich incident was October 11th. Uh, so anyway, uh, so we moved up there, and I believe around August, around our wedding anniversary, which would have been our, our seventh wedding anniversary. Right about the time we moved in, to Sweet Home, Oregon, to save our marriage, which was, you know, not not in good shape. So here I, here I, we were nine miles outside of Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, so I, I am supposed to save my marriage by pulling my wife away from her beautiful home in Santa Cruz her busy, successful career, which she loved, all of her friends, which she loved, uh, and, 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 and take her to some godforsaken hellhole nine miles outside of the biggest shithole in the United States of America, according to Audubon Magazine, and they made the right choice. It, it, everything about this move was wrong everything about it. I, I take, as I say, I'm going to give myself 85% of the blame. And so, obviously, the, uh, the fighting began immediately upon moving into this, to this goddamn house. The fight started, and so I, we had a huge blow-up on uh, September 22nd, uh, which was my birthday. We were, we were going, driving to Eugene for my birthday dinner to have a nice night out, out on the town, uh, go and enjoy ourselves, and something blew up, God knows what, that she that she went into one of these toxic. I'll have to start calling them Amber Heard level of psycho bitch attack on me on my fucking birthday. On my fucking birthday, driving to Eugene to uh, to have a nice dinner 
and night out in Eugene, completely fucking destroyed. Uh, the, the birthday was destroyed, the trip to Eugene. Well, this was September 22nd, so this was three weeks uh, before the famous ham sandwich incident, you know, when the marriage ended over that ham sandwich. And so I honestly don't know, you know, when I was, when I was listening to, uh, to uh, that divorce attorney, James Sexton, talking about, um, you know, realizing that there's no saving the marriage. But even after that, guys, even after that, I was still clinging to this absolutely ridiculous hope that, uh, that Caroline and I were, were going to save this marriage, uh, which should have ended probably three years before. And, and, and we, we made a truce after that fucking battle of the wills and uh, I will never know the actual date of the final, final collapse uh, of our marriage. Well, the final, final collapse was the ham sandwich. But the moment I, I knew the marriage was over, it was sometime after September 22nd, 1990, before October 11th, about halfway between there. So my guess is I'm going to call it October 1st, 1990. And so what we decided to do is go up to um, this area called the Sisters in Oregon, up in the High Cascades. You know, we lived on the west side, the wet side of the Cascade Sweet Home is on the the wet side, the ocean side. So it was probably a two hour, two or three hours. So uh, I had found, uh, scouted around and, and found this uh, beautiful campsite on the side of this lake uh, up there in the, probably I might even be called the Sisters National Forest. And we're going to call it October 1st, 1990. So we're getting our, in the truck. She and I are heading up there, going through all of this beautiful scenery. And, and one of the many buttons that Caroline, that her passive aggressive buttons that she was such a master at pushing is she knew my favorite thing to do on the planet, pretty much, was to get in my gas-sucking truck, drive down beautiful uh, back roads through the country and through the woods. This was my favorite thing, still is one of my favorite things. And so what she would do to piss me off is she would bring a book, you know, this was before, this was, you know, before cell phones and all that shit. So she would bring a book to read. And the book that she had that night, I, I remember to this day, it was the Chronicles of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia. I Was that C.E. Lewis or is that Wind in the Willows? Was C. But anyway... She had read the Chronicles of Narnia and the Wind in the Willows. She had read both of those books 30 fucking times. She knew every goddamn word in every one of those books. I never read either one of them. Uh, I have no interest in the Wind in the Willows or the Chronicles of Narnia. But these were her Bibles that she read over and over again. So Caroline <clears throat> was reading sitting there in the passenger seat of the truck, reading the Chronicles of Narnia for the 30th fucking time in her life uh, while we were driving through, you know, this absolutely spectacular 
fall scenery in the uh, in the Cascade Mountains. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure the fall leaves were at their height. Uh, that it, it was just this beautiful ride. So we got off the the main highway and we're heading back. Uh, on this Forest Service road cutting across the Cascades. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought maybe that would get her to put her fucking book down. You know, now that we were off the highway and, and, and back, you know, with the forest all growing in close. I don't know if you've ever driven back in those Forest Service roads in the Cascade Mountains in Oregon in early fall. Absolute fucking paradise. She had no interest in it whatsoever. All she wanted to do was get to the fucking campsite, uh, pitch the tent, uh, put up a hammock, and pour herself a stiff drink. Lie in her hammock, uh, having a stiff drink, reading the Chronicles of Narnia. That's all, the only thing that was on her mind. So we're driving through all of this gorgeous scenery. You know, every time you come around the bend, there's another uh, postcard outside the uh, window, sitting there reading her book that she'd read 30 times, and I was just trying to ignore it. Uh, so what happened was... <clears throat> I don't know what time. It was just uh, just late afternoon, probably. We were a few miles away from our destination, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this little creature called a pine marten. A pine marten, I th about the size of Sancho, uh, a little bit darker, about the size of Sancho, but has this long tail. They're these beautiful animals. Uh, they're actually uh, a species, they're from the weasel family. They're related to weasels and otters, and you've heard of these fishers. Well, this was, uh, the, these pine martens, I'm sure they're very rare. They're, they're, they're very rare, they're beautiful. Uh, I had never seen a pine marten in my entire life. I guarantee you that Caroline had never seen one. I guarantee you that Caroline went to her grave eight years ago without ever laying her eyes on a pine marten. Never happened in her entire life. So I was, what was I, 30? Uh, and I just turned, I, I think I had just turned 31 probably uh, a few days before and so what happened in broad daylight, I come across, and there's this pine marten, and he scampers across the road right in front of the truck. I almost, you know, I almost ran over uh, the damn thing. He came out of nowhere, uh, and, you, you know, I, I slam on the brakes. I'm all excited. It's very cool. And... Uh, you know, of course, Caroline did not see the Pine Martin because she was reading this fucking book uh, that uh, she'd read 30 fucking times. And so I'm all excited uh, that I had, uh, you know, seen a Pine Martin. It was the first time in my life, and I figured correctly it would be the only time in my entire fucking life I would ever see a pine marten, and so I was all excited about this and was disappointed that Caroline did not see the pine marten. And uh, I see, you know, and I was, so we were sitting there, and I was suggesting to her it probably ran up a tree and we might even be able, you know, to go find the goddamn thing. Uh, where she could see it. And we're sitting there. I'm all excited uh, about maybe chasing down this pine marten. And she looks up from her book. 
And I honestly don't know if she was trying to piss me off or not, guys. It, 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 I honestly do not know if this was a passive aggressive attack on me or if it was genuinely curi out of genuine curiosity she looks up from her book and she says who the fuck gives a shit about a pine martin that was her question who the fuck gives a shit about a pine martin? <laughs> and I just looked at that fucking bitch. And, and I said, well, darling, clearly you don't. And she just kind of shrugged and went back to her book. I restarted the truck and uh, that was the moment that I gave up my last shred of hope for saving that marriage. It's when I realized that I had married the wrong woman. Who gives, who the fuck gives a shit about a pine martin? <laughs> Obviously, uh, I married the wrong woman. Somehow, we survived that camping trip. In a few more days, <laughs> and then October 11th, 1990 rolled around in the infamous ham sandwich story which you do not need to hear again put the final kibosh on those seven years of marriage so if anyone would like to share with us in the comment section, uh, I'm sure I and divorce attorney James Dixon would be curious to know when was, when did you realize, did it finally get through your thick skull that you were married to the wrong person? And it was off to the divorce lawyer. I would love to hear your comments. But anyway, I am celebrating my 40th wedding anniversary uh, on this spectacularly gorgeous day by myself with my little dog. Get out there and enjoy being married to the wrong person while you still can. My guys. Okay, a little Pine Martin dog. We got to do another rant. <laughs>